Welcome to Could It Exist in Real Life, where wibbly wobbly timey wimey isn't just a silly thing to say. Doctor Who was considered one of the best sci fi TV shows in the world. It has a long running of 11 Doctors, 5 spin offs, 18 major story arcs, various gadgets to go gaga for, and over a billion characters and alien species to pick from. If you were to ask any sci fi geek what their favorite sci fi show was, the top contenders would either be Star Trek or Doctor Who. Of course, this is word of mouth for me, so odds are I'm probably full of it. The story is simple. An alien known only as the Doctor goes on an adventure through time and space. Along with his interchangeable human companions and the TARDIS, time and relative dimensions in space, a vehicle that is bigger on the inside while outside is size as a 1960s police box, the Doctor and his friends go to interesting places, meet interesting people, and do battle with many threats of the known universe, such as the Daleks, a group of alien races that seek to destroy anything that isn't them, the Cybermen, who assimilate beings to their collective to create a world-conquering army, and the Master, an insane member of the Doctor's race whose aspirations are for universe domination. Because of the long storyline, seriously, <laughs> this show is still going on as I speak. I'm only going to focus on the key points of the Doctor and his equipment. Could it exist in life? Let's start with the Doctor. He's a member of an alien race known as the Time Lords, a race of humanoid beings with two hearts that has mastered various scientific impossibilities such as time and interstellar travel. They created devices such as the TARDIS and the Sonic Screwdriver. The sonic screwdriver is both a weapon and a gadget frequently used by the Doctor. Among most things, it can fix something that was considered impossible to fix, while also makes a nifty lockpick, the only weakness being that it's useless against wood. Though you'd think after friggin' twelve oh, regenerations that he'd figured it out by now. It was the object I first searched for a real life equivalent that inspired me to do this blog in the first place. So needless to say, I found one. According to NBC News, Dundee University is currently working on one. So far, it can only make things spin. Best part is, they aren't the only one. The TARDIS, on the other hand, is another can of worms. For starters, time and dimension hopping has not been proven, and the only theories that claim it possible are Brief History and Time by Stephen Hawking. However, the big question is something both Doctor Who and non-Doctor Who fans asked since 1963. How is the TARDIS bigger on the inside? For starters, there is the practical reason. While the Doctor himself explained that the door of the TARDIS and the ship itself are in separate dimensions, interdimensional travel has yet to be proven, let alone creating transportation that uses it as a housing rather than a means of traveling itself. I offer an alternative theory. For starters, the obvious one explained many times in the show, the police box is camouflage. It is designed to make the ship look unlike a ship. By that logic, the police box is simply the door, while the surrounding ship is invisible. However, by that logic, if someone were to walk a foot beside the police box, they would hit something solid. So that theory is not out the window, but teetering. My physics is a little rusty, but it is my understanding that what keeps solid objects from phasing through one another is the electrons binding the said object. However, any disruption of said electrons will cause the object to be destroyed. I believe the Time Lords somehow bypass that. How? I can only guess, but rather than disrupt them, they speed them up so fast it's almost like they aren't there. So logically, the ship could be huge and can still fit around a town or a city crowded with buildings and people without anyone bumping their heads off of it. That aside from hitting the police box, since it cannot be faced. Last but not least is the doctor himself. Could he exist? Well, take away the fact that there's still no proof of humanoid aliens, and there are various concepts of him that exist. For example, a being with multiple hearts. An animal species on this earth, known as a cephalopod, squids, octopi, and other boneless life, have multiple hearts. Some of these species are capable of regeneration, as a doctor is in many ways. From regrowing limbs to an entire body reconstruction, this results in many appearances and personality changes. So in a way, in probably millions of years of evolution, much of the squid life would become the doctor we know and love, as well as the master we know and hate. We just have to wait and see. As usual, debate, argue, let me know what I miss. Stay tuned for more.